Good to see everybody. I won't be long here because I know this, this, uh, we got to go a little bit shorter with us getting ready to start meetings and practice, having to move it because of this, uh, nice summer day here in Norman, Oklahoma. So, um, uh, excited to go play Texas Tech. I mean, it's always fun to go down to Lubbock, always a very challenging place to go play and, and, uh, going to go play a team that's got a lot of momentum, uh, huge win the other night against, against West Virginia, um, played very well, certainly. Uh, look like their their most complete game of the year um, as as you as you study them and what they've done and and uh, so uh, you could tell Coach Wells is you know staff players everybody's starting to get settled in. Uh, I thought the quarterback came in and did a really nice job for them the other night. Really moved the ball well. Uh, tailbacks playing really really good ball for them. A lot of good receivers as always. Um, very experienced defense. You know so, I mean. Literally the whole defense of seniors, just about just seniors all over the place. A lot of guys that we've have played a, a bunch of ball against. Some impact players there, certainly in the front. Uh, so we're we're excited to go play. We've got we've got some momentum of our own. We got to keep building on it. Uh, but like where we're headed as a football team, um, I will just answer the question for you too. I still have nothing new on the on the three suspended players. So I'll let you know when I do. Okay, we'll go to questions. We'll begin with Ryan Avery, the Oklahoman, and then go to Eric Bailey. Yeah, Lincoln, wanted to ask you about uh, Theo Weiss. What kind of growth have you seen from him, you know, even since the season started and, and just uh, the importance of, of the role that he's playing right now uh, in, in that receiver group? Yeah, he's definitely grown. Um, I think, you know, we got Spencer has a lot of confidence in. Uh, you know, has made some big plays. I mean, I think, you know, the, the Texas game was an important game for him because he he made so many big critical catches in that game um, and kind of made them in different ways. And that, that's been key. I mean, I think he's becoming a more complete receiver. Uh, he's still still got a lot of growth to go, but he's he's making, you know, tough competitive catches. He's made catches down the field. Um, he's doing some decent things after the catch as well. So we're – we're, we're excited about his development and we've needed it. You know, that's been one of the rooms that, you know, we haven't, you know, really been anywhere near full strength really this entire season. And, and so we've needed, we've needed guys to step up and Theo's certainly been one of the guys that has done that for us. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Eric Bailey with the Tulsa world and then Joe Bettner. Hey Lincoln, I know it's way too early to compare Marvin Mims with CD, but do you see flashes of Marvin that remind you of CD as a true freshman? Uh, plus, can you talk just a little more about his punt return game and how he's really transitioned into the type of returner he has? Their skill sets are are pretty different. Um, the, the 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 comparison to me would be there's, you know, one they're mentally ready to play at a young age. You know, as far as handling, not only picking up the offense, but just handling all that comes along with playing football. You know, at at, at a university like this, there's just a lot to it and. And uh, you know Marvin's a guy that kind of handles all his business off the field. He he's very very dependable even at a young age. Kind of feels like he's been here for a long time. And guys that give you that feeling normally you know are able to contribute early. Um, uh, so that's that's probably the the biggest similarity. I mean they both they both have a good feel for the game. They're both mm -hmm. tough competitive kids. They both know that they belong. I mean there's there's a lot of kind of from the psyche standpoint. There's a lot of similarities. Um, uh, it's a punt returner. Yeah, a lot of the same things. I mean, we we gained a trust in him as time went on. I mean, punt return is one of those things that you can tell pretty quick if a guy wants to do it or not. And everybody says that they want to. And actually, very, very few people on your football team actually want to be the punt returner. I mean, it's uh, it takes skill, but it also takes a lot of guts. And uh, it takes somebody that wants that opportunity. And he, he showed that, showed a dependability for – Catching the ball, making good decisions back there, and, and then he's 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 honestly his after the catch or or with the ball in his hands, he's probably been a little bit more advanced than than we would have guessed. And that he he runs fearless, um, he gets vertical, and has outstanding speed and quick and, and uh, quickness. Thank you, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Joe Bettner with the Norman transcript, and then Jason Kersey. Uh, Lincoln, wondering what you make of. Uh, Nick Benito's progress to this point, and I guess overall, your your pass rush seems to seems to have been effective in the you know recent games. I'm curious what you make of, of, of that group as a whole as well. Benito's done a good job. He has. I, I think Nick has improved in a lot of areas. I think I think Jamar has been really good for Nick. Um, 
I think his his skill set as a rusher has certainly grown. Um, he's 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 certainly got a lot more. Um, I, I think a lot more moves, kind of a, a much bigger arsenal as far as the pass rusher than than what he's had before. And, and then I think his understanding of the whole defense has improved. And certainly he's been much better in the run game, a lot stronger, more physical uh, at the point of attack. And as far as the pass rush, I mean, it's been great for us that it's been a little bit by committee. Uh, we, we've had contributions from a number of players, uh, which – you know, I know we've talked about at length, you know, in, in this defense, that's that's what we have to have and that's what we demand out of our guys. And so, you know, whether it's guys winning one-on-ones or executing games or stunts together, uh, you know, we, we've just been able to get a lot of guys free and we've done a pretty good job of capitalizing on those pressures. Thanks, Lincoln. Jason Kersey with The Athletic and then John Hoover. Uh, yeah, Lincoln, your run game has obviously gotten better the last couple of weeks, but uh, still haven't averaged four yards a carry yet this year. And I, that's something I think a lot of us have come to expect <laughs> uh, that have followed this program for a while. Do you think you're close to your running game looking more like what we're used to seeing? I think so. And honestly, there was a lot of good things. We had about three or four just ridiculously dumb plays the other day that cost us like minus seven, minus eight, minus ten that were honestly – we ran the ball good enough the other day to have well over a four-yard average. So, I mean, we – you know, the, the, they all count. We get that. Um, but I, I think the execution in the run game from the O-line backs was much cleaner. Uh, we got a um, – like I said, we, a couple of really dumb mistakes that we made to just give away free yards, basically, that we, we've got to do better with. But, yeah, I do think we're closer. I mean, we're, we've popped a few more in the, last, in the last few games, and we've still been so agonizingly close to popping more, which I think we're going to continue to have a chance to do. Um, yeah, you just you see the progress each week. We're getting more in sync. Uh, backs are trusting it more. Linemen are, are getting a great feel for working together. It's I mean it's it's definitely heading the direction we want it to head. Now you know we can't we can't get there fast enough. So we'll we'll keep pushing like crazy to to get it as good as we can here this week in Lowick. Thanks, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. John Hoover, SI Sooners, and then James Hale. Hey, Lincoln, you, you said it right off the top. Um, Oklahoma's taken some really elite teams to Lubbock and has almost never really had it easy out there. Um, you played there, you coached there, you've coached as a visitor there. It's almost like the place has a mystique. In your experience, what do you think are some of the factors at play, why it's been so tough, and is this team mature enough to be able to handle such a thing? It just always has. It's uh, it, Like I said, I do have a unique perspective, like many on the staff, haven't, haven't been there. I mean, you know, it, I, I don't want to presume what, what Coach Wells or his players are thinking, but I know, you know, any, when you were at Texas Tech or when I was there, any time, a, you know, a Texas or an OU came to town, it was a, it was a big deal. Um, and, and I would imagine that hasn't changed. Um, but it's a big deal for us to go to Lubbock. You know, it's a great opportunity. It's, uh, you, road night games are, are as fun as it gets, and, uh, and especially there. I mean, I think every time we've been there, too, it's been a night game. Um, so... Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, it's challenging road football. And uh, we, you know, played against some pretty good players up there the last several years um, uh, that, you know, that have made plays. Our guys have made plays. And there's, there's been, you know, a lot of, a lot of back and forth. And uh, so, um, you know, I, last several years been down there, it's, you know, three of the, you know, three starting NFL quarterbacks playing in those games just like that. And uh, so it's, uh you know, it's a fun place to play, but it's also challenging, no question. Um, our maturity, you know, I, I hope that it's grown to that point. I mean, all we do right now is play on the road, apparently, so yeah. hopefully we're getting used to it. All right, thank you. Okay, James Hale with KREF and then Kerry Murdoch. Lincoln, you've always said special teams were important, and, you know, this year it's been incredibly evident. First couple of games that you lost, you know, special teams just not, not so good. In the games that you've won, they've been really good. You re reshuffled your coaching staff. Uh, you know, you decided to go not with a special teams coordinator. So, could you talk about how you how you kind of what you've got doing what with special teams and and are you coming on in special teams? Do you feel like you're where you need to be? Yeah, I do. I, I, I'm excited about how we've played there last last couple of games. Like you said, we've made some just monster plays that have been you know either 
you know, momentum shifters or allowed us to, con to continue momentum that, that maybe we already had. And uh, we're investing. I mean, we're playing a lot of our best players there. Uh, we've really invested in it from a practice standpoint, invested in it a lot throughout the quarantine, spent a lot of time meetings wise with our guys in that in these different phases. Um, you know, Coach Beamer is, is is leading the charge on the majority mm -hmm. of our special teams right now. We certainly still – we've got other coaches that are heavily involved and honestly a little more heavily than what they've been in the past. Um, you know, in the previous years, Coach Beamer and and uh, Coach Bulware kind of shared the duties where we've got a few other guys that are coordinating some of the units and doing a nice job. So, um, you know, it's uh, – it's really been a total staff investment, and uh, you know those guys have done a, a really good job, and our players have been very bought in, which I think is always one of the biggest keys on special teams. Thanks, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Kerry Murdoch with Sooner Scoop and WWLS, and then Cliff Brunt. Hey, Lincoln, you you had talked about your defensive line earlier, and they've been so good for you. But I know from the outside going into the season, a lot of panic just because your top two returning sack guys weren't going to be starting the season with you. Um, is this maybe the best example of kind of uh, recruiting evaluation development that you were kind of hoping that you would see on that side of the ball when you took over? Yeah, I think that's a fair statement. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know many fronts, you know, that would, you know, lose, you know, a high draft pick, you know, lose. I think we lost four other guys, four other seniors on the defensive line last year. And then, like you said, you start the season without arguably your two most talented defensive linemen. Uh, and still be able to produce uh, the way our guys have. And so I, I do. I mean, I think it first speaks to the the character and the drive in that room of our players. So, I mean, I give our, our, our defensive linemen right now the most credit uh, because they have – they've been the ones to go make the plays and to, you know, to take the hard coaching and to not let the expectations or standard drop in any way because somebody else might not be there. Um, and that's – so first and foremost, great job by them. You know, Coach Tibb, Coach Kane have, have done a great job with those guys as well. And I think it does. I mean, I think we've, we've hit on some guys from an evaluation standpoint uh, and, and been able to develop some of these guys. I know we've talked about Isaiah, but Jordan Kelly, I think, is another great example in there of a guy that's just really continued to develop and get better and better. You know, Marcus Stripling's coming on and doing some nice things. John Michael Terry's really developed through his years here. He was our defensive player of the week last week. So there's just there's just a lot of uh yeah, a lot of positive vibes there a lot of uh you know a lot of hard work a lot of competition and and guys you know we're not we're not paying attention to who's not there we're just we're just going and playing at a level that we expect to play regardless and that's that's it's a great mentality for us to have i'm sorry to follow but just just i mean how surprising is that to you just with covid and all you know you've said it many times this is unprecedented getting a team ready to play the season that you've had that many guys step up like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, we've had to have it, um, but has it been, it's been one of, has it been one of this team's strong suits this season? Without question, without question. And uh, yeah, it's, I just can't say enough about those guys. Thanks, Lincoln. Cliff Brunt with AP and then Brandon Drum. Yeah, Coach, what would you say is most responsible for TJ Pledger's increase in production the last couple of games? I think he's just gotten opportunities and he's just getting settled in. I mean, even though he's been here for a few years, he, you know, he hasn't played a whole lot of ball here yet. Um, and certainly not in a lead back type role. I mean, not anywhere near that. And then, you know, all of a sudden, bam, you go in, you're the guy. And then he had to miss, you know, he wasn't able to play the first game and, you know, missed a lot of time uh, on top of all that, you know, so he's just, he's just kind of getting his feet underneath him. He's starting to understand it, kind of getting a rhythm. Um, I think he's gaining confidence um, in himself, the line, you know, trust in what he's seeing. You just, you just see steps each week. And, uh, and he's got a toughness and an attitude to continue to work and get better. So uh, I just think all those combined have, have uh, you know, got him headed in a, in a very positive direction. And then how much uh, is it the offensive line that's in front of him? It all works together. I mean, it's, it's, it, it all counts the same. I mean, it's the linemen in front of them. It's receivers blocking on the perimeter. It's quarterbacks making good reads. It's me making good calls. It's us scheming it up the right way. I mean, it, it's there's so many areas that need to go right to play good. And uh, I think, you know, we're all, you know, hopefully learning more about each other and getting a little bit better at all of our jobs as we go through. Brandon Drum with OU Insider and then Keegan Renault. Yeah, Lincoln, can you talk about your secondary? I know they get – 
publicly the fans they get upset with a few of them every now and then but can you talk about how strong they played over I guess the last three or four games for you guys yeah they've done a lot of good things they have um you know I thought we've eliminated you know last couple of weeks eliminated a few of the just just flat out busts you know that we had and, and really Kansas State was really kind of the last game that we had some had some busts that that obviously you know made a big difference in that game and then I think we've played a lot smarter too I mean we want to we want to play aggressive but we've been able to not have you know several of the you know holding DPI penalties um you know throughout the game so we've uh I think we're getting better, and I think it's helped us being able to play more guys. You know, we've been able to play, you know, Jay Cordell's and DJ Graham's, you know, playing Norwood more. Um, uh, some of the other young corners have had some opportunities, Broyles. I mean, so we're – I think it's helped us being able to play more guys where we're not relying on those starters playing every single snap. Uh, it's created competition, um, and I think been a, a very healthy thing for us. So we're doing a lot of good things. Yeah, and I get to deal with the public and the secondary. I mean – Defensive lineman makes a mistake, or a lot of other players on the football field, you don't always see it. And when a secondary guy makes it, it's 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 normally out in the open field, and where you know every single person's watching that game, their eyes are right there. So that's it's the nature of playing the position. Uh, but we're we're uh, we're doing a lot of good things in the secondary, um, and uh, again, I like the competition and depth that we have in there right now. Has Bryson Washington come along? Long? Pretty well. So, you know, he came in and played uh, on kickoff team for us there at the end uh, of our game the other day and got in there and made, made solo tackles on both of his kickoff reps, which was great to see. So a lot of times for a young guy, that's the start. You get in an opportunity on special teams, uh, you go make some plays, you catch people's eye, and, and then opportunity on the offensive or defensive side of the ball normally shows up soon after. Keegan Renault, Sooners Wire, and then Lee Benson. Lincoln, obviously, you want to be undefeated and have everything going in the right direction. But just with your guys' youth, your inexperience, COVID, the year 2020 and everything, could this kind of just be a blessing in disguise for what could be coming in the future for you guys? Um, I mean, I, I'm definitely excited about the future, but the uh, future's in the future. You know, I'm, we're – locked in on this team and trying to go win in Lubbock. And I think this team's got a really good run left in them. And uh, so that's – I am excited about the future. I certainly don't want to dole that. There's, there's, I think, a lot of great signs. But but this team's got a lot of really good things ahead of it. So I don't want to get too far in front of ourselves. Thanks, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Lee Benson with KWTV and then Jenny Carlson. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you a follow-up on the secondary. Uh, uh, five games in, what are your thoughts on Trey Norwood's play considering – uh, what he's coming back from. And do you still consider him a, a flexible player position-wise, or do you like him now as that strong safety coming in for DTY or, or also the 6D back when you guys win a dime? Yeah, he's, he, he certainly gives us a lot of flexibility. Uh, you know, we've been trying not to overuse him at too many spots so that, you know, we, we don't water him down, so to say. But he is uh, – yeah, I think he's really done a good job coming back from his injury. I think he's getting closer and closer to full speed. Um, you know, you could still tell early on in the year that he was still working his way back. But he's uh, he's at a good place right now. And I think just getting his feet back under him, getting used to being back out there playing, um, you can just see his confidence growing each and every week. So we've liked him. We've liked him at strong. You know, he's done a nice job filling in there and been able, like you said, to get him some – some reps and some of our packages, but um, yeah, the, his value is still sky high because mentally he can he can play any position in the secondary. Thank you. Okay, Coach Hesse, going to meetings here. It looks like our last question will be Jenny Carlson, the Oklahoman. Hey, Lincoln. I know you referenced earlier that Isaiah has been a guy that has been talked about quite a bit the last few weeks, but um, being a Tulsa guy, being an Oklahoma kid from the state, you've got several. Oklahoma guys on that defense, but what do you see as the value in having um, having guys from the state of Oklahoma as as central parts uh, of a unit like like those guys are in defense? Yeah, it's important, I, and and maybe just central parts of our team. Um, you know, we we do recruit nationally. We do. You know, there's not many places we won't go, and that we don't have a shot at a at a player. But uh, there's always still an importance of having you know, a presence from, from your home state. I mean, and, and uh, you know, a lot of these guys grew up watching this place, um, seeing all the great teams, great players that have come through here, um, their families did. And I think, I think 
I think that's important. You know, I think it helps teach, you know, some of our maybe player from out of state that doesn't know as much about our history when they come in about the place and this expectations and, and, and the fact that they can, you know, they're, they're still, these Oklahoma guys on our team are still, even though they're here at the university, are still quote unquote home, um, where a lot of our guys are coming from hundreds, if not thousands of miles away. And uh, I think that helps kind of create that, that family atmosphere here and that feeling of home that, that we aim to, to have and, and be able to, you know, put in front of our players. And uh, so I, I think it's important on very, very many levels.